Hi guys, welcome to this evening update video. I hope you've been having a really wonderful Saturday so far. Now I thought I'd make an evening update to talk a bit more about what is now designated as Invest 97L. So that's the same tropical wave off Africa that we're watching. The formation chance with each update has also been on the rise. It's just below being in cold red, which means high formation chance. So we're gonna talk about that primarily in this update video. And there's a little rain surge uh, moving into parts of the Southeastern Caribbean as well. We'll also talk about that. So let's go on into the details. Okay, here we go. So there are two disturbances, Invests 96 and 97L. Now 96L at one point had a 60% formation chance, but because all that dry air and dust have really been impacting the chance uh, for it to develop and that it wasn't really producing much thunderstorms and it was evidently struggling, that chance has been decreasing now all the way down to 20%. Likely to curve up and out, not a bother for anyone. So that's not going to be a concern and then there is invest 97l newsy uh, newly designated invest area so this tropical wave is pretty likely to develop and may head very very close to land if it doesn't impact land directly so we really don't know exactly if the system is going to bring direct impacts to places, for example, those heavy uh, rainfall periods, strong winds, storm surge. It depends on how close the system moves. And models have been favoring a turn, a curve of the system rather. And it's a matter of when, because if it takes longer to curve, there will be a greater chance of land areas being directly impacted by the system down the road. So we're going to look at some model trends a bit more in a bit more detail in this evening's update. So for now, formation chance against standing at 60%, likely to go up to 70% tomorrow. And briefly go into the Caribbean as well. So as we zoom into the satellite imagery of the area here, we can see lots of showers and thunderstorms, heavy rainfall instances in parts of Cuba as well, possibly some flood and rains in a couple spots with all that shower activity. Earlier, some brief thunderstorms were in parts of Jamaica. We see those upper level winds kind of pushing some of that convection down on uh, Jamaica. Not any substantial activity, though. It's been quite hot for many of us today. In parts of Hispaniola, especially towards Haiti this evening, it gets a bit active there. Likewise, for a couple spots in uh, Central America as well. And then as we look to the Southeast Caribbean, just on the outskirts of the region, the periphery, there we can see that little cluster of convection. So that's been helping out to influence the rain for uh, Barbados, Tobago, and especially for Trinidad. So between now and tomorrow, there could be some additional instances of those heavy rains. And other parts of the Lesser Antilles, uh, the Windward Islands rather, likely to feel some of those impacts, some of those periods of heavy rain will be possible for Grenada, the Grenadines, St. Vincent, possibly St. Lucia as well. So two of our main models are Euro and GFS. So let's take a look at them. First up, we have the GFS model. And this is as we're going to be heading into uh, Friday of the coming week and going into next weekend. So roughly a week out from now. So GFS wants to keep the system generally offshore. There have been times where it shows landfall in the southeastern states, where it shows the system much closer to the Bahamas. And there are times like now when it is showing that, hey, you know, it may actually be offshore and just swing by without bringing any crazy impacts to land, even though it is undoubtedly showing a very strong hurricane, a major hurricane becoming off the system. After that, though, I've been watching the models as well. Further out, going to the latter part of August, there could be another tropical wave emerging from Africa, which may attempt to get itself together within the vicinity of the Caribbean. Nothing solid as yet. This is very far out from now, but it is certainly going to be possible and not an outlandish scenario based on the time of year and the conditions that are setting up out there as well. As it relates to the Euro model, we're seeing a similar story here. So this is next Thursday, going to Friday. We see 97L at that point, likely a tropical storm intensified, going to early the following week, the Tuesday the 19th. It gets even stronger, and uh, Euro wants to show the system making a curve a bit sooner compared to GFS, moving just by Bermuda uh, within that area there. And then it also shows that other tropical wave attempting to get itself together, 
So as we're going to be heading into the following week and headed to the latter part of August, we see it showing maybe another tropical storm. This time could be much closer to the Caribbean. Again, nothing solid, but we see that in common between GFS and Euro. And in terms of intensity of the system with the other models, since it's a newly designated invest, we don't have a whole plethora of them being available. But based on what's available, the majority, or all of them rather, have the system at least becoming a tropical storm. We see two of them taking it up to hurricane status. And I really think that it has a very solid chance at becoming a hurricane in the long run, especially with those anomalously warm waters out there in some areas. And once those upper level winds are favorable, which they are ahead of it, so those will be aiding in development. And one of those factors, we still have a lot of dry air out there, so it may sh uh, struggle a bit for the short term. But eventually, we could certainly uh, see the system become a tropical storm and eventually the first hurricane of the season. So there's a pretty decent likelihood of that happening. So in terms of the time and for the middle of next week, it could become a tropical depression, possibly before that if it wants to surprise us. And then subsequently, tropical storm and hurricane intensity are expected. The next name on the list for the hurricane season is Erin. So is this Erin in the making? Looks pretty likely. And as I mentioned, those conditions, let's look at them briefly. So we've got the very warm surface waters for tropical cyclones, at least 26 degrees Celsius uh, would be that minimum threshold there to see development. So we see that that's very much uh, dominant across the tropical Atlantic ahead of the system, and especially as we head to the vicinity of the Bahamas. So the models still want to uh, generally show the system being offshore for the most part so when it enters this area here well north of the caribbean the water temperatures get really really high so those will certainly aid in intensification of the system so that is well on its way ahead of it as i mentioned those upper level winds are already in place as well for the dry air though here we are looking at the dry air map and all these colorful shadings that we are seeing are indicative of the dry air where we see more of those orange and red shadings indicates areas of denser or more abundant dry air being present. So we definitely see that ahead of the system. But once it generally remains south of that uh, denser air, dry air mass, it could certainly have more opportunity, uh, more of an opportunity to strengthen and further intensify over the course of the next couple of days. So it's definitely one to watch and I will be keeping you guys posted as necessary. And once more, nothing is set in stone just yet. So time will certainly tell what the system is planning to do. So that's pretty much what I wanted to bring to your attention in today's update video. And so if you have any questions, you can feel free to drop them down in the comments. I will get to you when I have the chance to do so. And remember to always be weatherwise.